Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are in the world today. My name's Paul Webb, I'm the founder of B2B Energy, and you are listening to Energy Speaks Back. Energy Speaks Back interviews energy experts from around the world. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, and welcome to episode 26 of Energy Speaks Back. Weekly, I present to you experts from around the world, and today we are in the land of the real windmill in Amsterdam. Our purpose, as always, is to provide a good understanding of energy management knowledge from around the world, which is available today for us to deliver savings that impact on our planet. My guest today just proves my understanding across the world that we all speak different languages, but we all speak the same language of saving energy. He has been instrumental with some innovation around wind energy. So without any further ado, I give you Herman J. Harking. Good morning to you, Herman. And how is Herman this morning? Yeah, good morning, uh, Paul. Yeah, I have a good day. I uh, started today with my BNI chapter and uh, we had a nice uh, introduction uh, about uh, technology. So yes, uh, it was a nice day. Uh, I will say something about myself. Um, I'm doing already 15 years in the energy sector and the last six years I'm doing uh, innovation. It started uh, by uh, invention of uh, Harry, who has passed now, um, about uh, a windmill with uh, balls. And um, and the main idea was to have in in low um, uh, wind speed already uh, a lot of energy. But he's passed away and uh, I must carry uh, on, but um i need some funding before i can do the steps uh, forward so um i said okay then i'm doing first other technology what's all available and then we go uh, by the profits uh, we're going to do the balls from harry so you've mentioned windmill there so that's obviously you're you're based in holland in the netherlands yep. Um, and windmill being a very traditional form of power um, for many, many years. Um, is this your technology um, or in the same lines of the windmill or is there any changes? With it? Yeah, this is totally uh, different because um, normally you uh, have um, uh, horical uh, windmills, but uh, my is vertical. So right. every wind chill, uh, it will pick up and we get uh, very soon uh, results. But when you have a, a turning uh, point and you must uh, go to uh, bring it to electricity, then you have sometimes um, not the, enough power to bring uh, the energy in your batteries. Right. So that's sometimes the the, the the problem, and that's even the same problem we have by uh, the vertical uh, system. So that should be uh, done some engineering, and I found some uh, failures what Harry not have seen. So I think um, I can improve his technology to bring uh, it in a new way of uh, of installing. So I've done some research on windmills and the you mentioned the difference between a vertical and a horizontal windmill. And I understand from the horizontal windmill that there's a, a certain level of wind that you require. So if it's low wind, the turbine doesn't turn. If it's too much wind, which is quite bizarre, really, mm -hmm. um, it, it can be dangerous. It can damage the, the windmill and the... Yeah generation how does your system differ from that being vertical uh, the basic idea uh, is that uh, we have uh, uh, a generator who can produce 
uh, three times more energy than uh, it's on, on the list. It's, um, it's a French generator, but uh, the problem what I had uh, to use it is that um, the in, there was not enough power to generate uh, uh, enough to turn the generator. So you know um, how more turnings you have, how more energy you have. Right. But yeah. uh, when you have um, uh, one uh, that's um, um, 28 turning in one minute, it's maximum. So, uh, and when you need for a normal generator, you have about thousand or maybe more uh, turnings before you get energy out of it. So we need a, a new kind of um, generator to generate uh, with low uh, turning points, uh, even uh, less or more uh, energy. Okay. So Herman, um, can, we, can we go back in time a little bit? Where did you learn this? Where, what's your background regarding your education um, within the energy uh, sector? Yeah. Yeah, I was um, working in the, the healthcare uh, as an occupational therapist. And, um, uh, and then they said, okay, we go um, uh, working together with another company. And uh, so there must uh, flow some personal out of the business. So, uh, and because I was the latest one in the organization, I was the first one who may go out. So, right. and that's now 20 years ago. And then I thought, I thought okay, energy is already always be a, a point of um, interest. I'm going to do uh, energy uh, stuff. And then I started with um, selling uh, products uh, in, um, in an, um, uh, in an organization, but I thought, okay, uh, the profit is very low because there's a, 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 a certain of steps you must do before you get your uh, your your profit. Um, so um, then I said, okay, I, actually I would like to do then some uh, uh, innovation, and then suddenly um, Harry was coming and he told me that uh, he was busy with his um, uh, windmill and uh, and I said okay so let's start work together and uh, so we we talked about uh, the possibilities and uh, why uh, he is is doing it uh, because um, he had uh, a friend in in Africa and when there is a, a, a muson, uh, there is no uh, road available for uh, benzene or, or diesel. So uh, there's no uh, generating uh, stuff. So, uh, and he said, okay, when we have a windmill with batteries, we can solve the whole problem. Uh, yeah. And maybe with a connection with some uh, solar panels, then we have always 24-7. So that's the reason why I said, okay, it's, it's nice to do that. And, uh, but after uh, two years, he uh, passed away with a heart attack. Oh, and uh, since then, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in all, uh, already in my head to, to do the steps, but okay. Uh, but in the meantime, I saw that batteries is, um, is a thing for the future because uh, you have solar panels and you have only, when you have sun, you have production. Yeah. And so the connection with batteries is quick uh, solved, but uh, the cost of the batteries uh, is also uh, high. So uh, I had talked with uh, some parties in Canada who had made a new kind of battery you can um, uh, load very quickly. And, uh, but I said, yeah, but 
still we need uh, two sources, uh, wind and solar, to have governed the whole year uh, for uh, energy. And then on, um, on, an, uh, on a day I met um, Peter, and Peter is uh, working uh, for the neutrino technology in, um, in Berlin, and he is um, working for, for them in the Benelux. And, uh, and then we talked about the neutrino technology. And I said, yes, that should be the nice step because you have uh, only a, uh, a foil of um, aluminium with uh, graphene and silicium, and that's it. And then and the, the, the vibration is only um, uh, 0 0.1 uh, millimeter uh, thick. So when you have the, the folly, what you have in, um, in your kitchen, uh, it's the same thick, to, but with a little bit uh, technology on it, and you have a battery. Wow. Then you have um, a small green feed because uh, you need only to recycle the aluminium and you have the, the, the production back. So it's also maybe uh, for 99% of recyclable. Right. So when we look at the circular economy on this particular battery, it's going to be clear in fact, because we're going to be able to recycle it much more than what yeah. we can do conventional batteries. And that's interesting. So, and how far how far are we away with this technology to be able to deliver that today? Yes, yeah. the, um, the the company is uh, busy to make uh, a fabric uh, from uh, in in south of um, Germany, and uh, through Peter we have the possibility to make a fabric in the Netherlands. Because we can do we can do then the production for the Benelux, for example. Yeah. So uh, I have now talks with uh, TNO and with um, and the Energy Board in the Netherlands uh, if they have some possibilities to have some air uh, place to uh, to put the the fabric there, and uh, but. Um, uh, and then we can start. So I hope that we can start this year uh, with, the, with, uh, with the fabric. And uh, then we can have uh, next year a kind of um, uh, self-loading uh, battery. And so then- sorry, that... <clears throat> So sorry to ask this question um, and put you on a spot right this minute, but the actual windmill itself, how far, uh, have you got any case studies with that currently? Yeah, there's also the 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 the, the top. I'm I think I'm I'm ready to it, but the the generator, I, we that that's the a point of um, of discussion because it, it must be a, a new kind of uh, generator who can do uh, with low turns, uh, uh, give also uh, some energy because the 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 normal um energy uh, in wind is 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 between uh, zero and uh and eight meters a second uh, that's the most of the energy so um that's the reason also why the the, the new windmills are going to 250 meters because above we have more wind available right. but when you can do it on the ground for example, to put it in a, in a, a C container, the system and the, the propellers or the, the balls uh, above, then you have um, not, uh, it's, it's, it's low as 10, 10, meters, uh, 10, 10 meters. So uh, then you have the possibility to, to clean the, the, the landscape of uh, pollution of the windmills, you know? Yeah. By, by making them being more lower because they can operate at a lower yeah. level. And, and the, 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 the noise that they make is, is very low. 
Right. Because the, the normal windmills, you have some, uh, because they are already on 200 meters. So uh, when they make noise, you 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 have uh, in two three kilometers away you have the, the noise over there, yeah. Uh, and um, and when you have stay under the ten meters or fifteen meters, uh, then you always uh, may allow to place them everywhere. And when there's uh, trees and uh, and buildings uh, in uh, in the area of uh, of uh, 20 meters, 50 meters, uh, then you have not the problem that the, the windmills are going down because uh, the wind is going around the building and you get also the energy of that. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, there's quite a lot of uh, benefits here um, regarding yeah. noise, regarding the visual uh, view on these um, and the impact that we can use them within different wind levels. Yes. In this thing you, you say about the C containers, is that to contain all the battery and uh, the controls side of it? Is that what you're referring to? So when, yeah. you, when you buy these windmills, they come as a complete unit? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the basic idea was that every, every um, part of the, the windmill fit in the container. Right. But yeah. And I don't know, but but otherwise we we take two two uh, um, containers so that you can put the the windmill uh, above the, the the other container so you have a kind of maintenance under the under the windmill. And the application for these would they be to utilize on a, an existing organization, or would you be looking to just plug these into the grid? to provide um, exported power for the grid. What was yeah. your views on this? Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, in the, the first place, I think it should be for farmers who, right. who, who, who are, um, have need the energy for um, computer of a robot um, milking and that kind of stuff because they, had, they have already need 24 seven energy. Um, and then uh, when you have enough, you send it back to the grid. Uh, but when you have the batteries, you can do also uh, flatten um, the, the frequency of the, of the grid. So when you have 50 Hertz, when you stay uh, in the 50, uh, every uh, computer and every uh, clock is working uh, optimal. But when you have uh, 51 or uh, 49, uh, the, the clock goes quicker or slower. So, and then you have uh, some uh, of problem. Um, that was, I thought, two years ago. Um, uh, there was in Europe um, one country who doesn't uh, did enough uh, put uh, energy in the grid. That's the reason why the grid in totally in Europe goes for for uh, for a moment lower than the 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 fifty, and that's the reason why then uh, a lot of clocks uh, working not so uh, as it uh, must be, but okay. So we're that's the reason we're why we're talking frequency now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. fifteen, the fifty or the sixty in in the United yeah. States, you know. Yeah, yeah, the hertz, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that intrigues me, the, the, the unit that you're describing, for me, could possibly be used for um, a mobile type system. Yeah. It'd be very easy to take it off the back of a lorry, take the lorry to move that from one place to the other. So where we've got weaknesses in the grid, we could take those units in and, and plug them in. Yeah, especially yeah. You know, when you're talking about Africa, for instance, they could use that as, a, as some form of localized portability for for energy yeah. um, and i'm sure it will then start to start off as being portable and then become more permanent as the reliability of this technology grows yeah that's right that's excellent yeah. i do like the idea of that yeah so i hope that i can i can achieve uh, the goal of uh, of harry yes and um 
And so, how much, um, you know, I'm happy for you to share with us today because you don't know someone could be listening today who may have some very deep pockets that want to invest in someone like yourself um, regarding your passion. So what yeah. sort of funding, how much funding do you think you need to get this technology up off the road, on the road? Well, uh, yeah. So um, for the neutrino technology, uh, we're looking to, uh, when you want to uh, bring a, a fabric uh, to life, uh, that's about uh, uh, 10 million uh, dollars. Uh, sorry, um, uh, euros. Euros, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and for the the windmill, I think. Well, I don't know, um, but um, because the, the, the must be done something about the the generator. So I, I can't say the uh, amount of of money. But when there is somebody who can help me to um, to think about. Um, um uh, the the generator i think uh it could be help me very much uh, to achieve the goal and what do you do with your when you're not working on this project what is your other focus and i know you're a bni member what what yeah. do you do what what's your seat there with bni yeah um well I'm doing innovation in uh, in new technology, and uh, the last three years I've worked on um, the, the waste gun, and the waste gun is um, uh, the latest magnetic uh, technology, uh, and we can do uh, uh, treat uh, waste from uh, from a lot to nothing. So we can uh, reduce the waste from 300 ton to one ton or less, is that depending from what kind of uh, waste you put in. Right. But the, the nice of the system is that uh, when you do uh, tires, you shred it first and then you put it in the, in the, in the chambers. And then you have some uh, the, the the metallic of the tires come out, and you get some of uh, a kind of uh, diesel, biodiesel or diesel, what you, what you want to say, uh, that you can use for in in in, in tractors or in other uh, machines. So that could be also uh, a nice idea. And uh, the fun is that. Um, you can also use uh, coal. When you, when you crush it to powder, you can put it in the waste gun and you have uh, only um, 0 uh, 0.8 uh, milligram uh, square meters on, uh, on, 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 on dust because normally you have uh, about 50 milligram, but we, we can uh, achieve uh, uh, so about uh, 60, 70 percent less on uh, particular metals, and that's that's enormous thing. And uh, and the air what we are going uh, to put out is 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 very clean because we wash it three times, and uh, because we use the the magnets. Uh, there is coming um, uh, some air in, and in combination with uh, the magnets, uh, it's uh, you get the sum of um, um, uh, um, um, anti um, uh, dioxide uh, uh, exit, and then yeah, okay, but. Um, uh, you, we, we, with, with the system, we, we can uh, attack the, the, the furan and the dioxides, uh, what we normally have by uh, using uh, burning. So all, all, all that kind of um, um, bad uh, air, uh, we, we will lose uh, them because the uh, oxidants, that's right. The oxidant uh, is uh, attack the foran and the dioxine. 
Herman, we really appreciate you speaking in English today. And I know it isn't your, your first language as such, and we really appreciate the opportunity of you trying to explain it to this yeah. to our audience today. And our audience is quite mixed anyway, but you know, I really appreciate, I know it's difficult for you, um, but thank you. I really appreciate that, that um, your approach today. So, and thank you for that. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's been great catching up with you. Um, obviously, we, we have met through BNI, through networking, um, and we've had quite a few one-to-ones and we've been discussing the technologies. But is there something you can give back to our audience today regarding your expertise and your knowledge as a takeaway for them? Yeah, so my, my basic uh, idea is to... Um, to, la- to live in neutral in water, in CO2 and energy. So that's my goal. And uh, that's the reason why I'm, I'm working on different kinds of uh, products to solve the, the problem what we have now. So that's the reason, that's my, my driving point. Your, your mission in life. Yeah. To make us more sustainable. And to remove all the pollutions out of the world and things. Yep. Um, that's very honourable uh, mission for you. Um, and it's an amazing mission. And we need people like you in the industry leading the way with all your experience. Um, and that's the reason why I wanted to invite you today. Um, because of this, you know, we need people to be thinking out the box. It's great that everyone can come in and, you know, do their bit. But we still need different people to have these great ideas of what we could be doing because these great ideas become ideas that we can deliver. And I think that's important, you know, for, yeah. for what we do. So the, the industry has got room for you, Herman, and we really appreciate your input into the industry. Um, you're doing an amazing, amazing job. So Herman, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me today on my podcast. Um, it's been a very interesting uh, listen and please please come back to us again when you get more funding you've got more ideas to bring to the table and to share that with our global energy experts so thank you very much for your time today i did it with uh, all my heart paul thank you uh, thank you very much and please be safe for you and your family yeah thank you you too thank you for listening today and thank you to my special guest And if you want to know more about managing your third largest expense, please go to our website on b2benergy.co.uk. That leaves me with one more thing to say. Be safe.